you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast, the hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready, strap yourself in, keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times, because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show.com. Hey, welcome to the podcast. We certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. Be sure to see the video version of this at youtube.com forward slash Chris Voss. Hit that bell notification. We have a most amazing author today. And of course, we only have amazing authors on the Chris Voss Show. If you don't see these amazing, no, I can't say that. These amazing authors, of course, are everywhere. But the only ones that are on the Chris Voss Show are the amazing authors. So you definitely want to see that as well. But they do tour around. They do other podcasts as well. But this young lady, she wrote a beautiful, extraordinary book that's highly motivational and something we really probably need right now with all the different things we've been dealing with uh, lately over the last year. She wrote the book, I Want to Thank You, How a Year of gratitude can bring joy and meaning into a disconnected world. She's the author of this book, Gina Hamadi, and uh, she's got an extraordinary bio we're going to take and go over here. She's a former writer with O, The Oprah Magazine, Food and Wine, Rachel Ray Every Day, and Women's Health. She spent a year saying thank you, writing a letter a day to someone who touched her life, And while she wrote to her friends and family, she also wrote to people that might be less obvious, but no less important. One month, she wrote to doctors and healthcare workers. One month, she wrote to educators. She also spent a month writing to shopkeepers, the people she sees every day in her small Brooklyn neighborhood. The results were life-changing. Selfishly, it made her happier, spreading around joy and gratitude, but the letters also healed complicated relationships and reconnected her with the people she loved. Gina writes about her experiences in the newest book. This thing is going to be coming out on April 13th, so you want to get the pre-order in on it so you can take and be the first one on your block and book club to say, I know what's in this book. And uh, she writes about her experiences, and I want to thank you. This wonderful book we'll be talking about today, and uh, it's pretty darn awesome. Welcome to the show. Gina, how are you? I'm great, Chris. Thank you so much. What a lovely introduction. Thank you. I was cheating a little bit. I was reading it from your PR agent, so there was that. (laughs) (laughs) So you've written this wonderful book. It's coming out April 13th. I want to start congratulations on writing a book. This isn't easy. Yeah, yeah, it it is. It does feel like an accomplishment. I feel like my head's been down and I've been working so hard that I'm I'm trying to take it in and enjoy these lovely chats for one thing. There you go. There you go. You're on the you're on the other side of it. The writing of the book is hard, man. I still I'm still trying to write my first book, and I'm just doing a pop up that's like, uh, you know, poems or something. I don't know. I'm just I'm not doing. You know that. what's harder than the writing of the book is the planning of the writing of the uh, book. That's what I find. Like when people are like, "Oh my God, you wrote a whole book on thank yous." So you wrote all these thank you notes in one year. So did you just print them into a book? And I'm like, no, but. In the beginning, when I was trying to conceive of the book, that was one idea. It's like when there's no blueprint, that's the hard part. When it's like, oh, my God, it could be X, it could be Y, it could be Z, and the whole world, it it feels like there's a whole world of options. But once I had the idea for what it would be, then actually the writing of it was really fun. Awesome sauce. Give us your plugs so people can find you on the interwebs, get to know you more, and order this wonderful book. Yeah. So GinaHamity.com links to all the pre-order, the Amazon, your Amazon, your book, the indie book, et cetera. And it, you could also just search my name on Amazon if that's the easiest for you. Although support your local indie bookstores. I'm on Instagram at Gina.Hamady and that's H-A-M-A-D-E-Y. And I'm on, I don't know, I, you could find me anywhere, Gina Hamady. There you go. <laughs> so what motivated you want to write this book? Okay, so it all started on a train ride. So I was commuting on the New Jersey Transit, doing an opposite commute from my home in Brooklyn out to Summit, New Jersey. I had a consulting gig at Bowl & Branch, which is a nice home goods, soft sheets company. And I, it was like an hour long train ride. It was in January of 2018. And I'm a mom of two little kids and I got this busy career. And the quiet train ride is like a vacation. That's, it doesn't get any better. But I found that it would go by too quickly and I was lost in email and feeds. And I had this vague sense that I wasn't quite 
I don't know, taking advantage um, of it. But I wasn't thinking about that too much. It was a thought in the back of my mind. And then I had this big stack of thank you notes to write to people who had donated to a, a fundraiser of mine for City Harvest, which is a great organization. And it wasn't something I was looking forward to doing. I'm not like one of those people. I feel like people are finding me now that they're like, oh, I've always loved writing thank you notes. I'm like, really? <laughs> I definitely didn't. So it wasn't a task that I was looking forward to. But I found that when I actually turned to it and on the tray table, focused on one person by one person, these random people in my life that had given money to this fundraiser, it was just feeling really good. It's like a whole, it's, it felt like the whole day changed. It's a peace and a calm came over me. I felt blood pressure was lowering and my breathing slowed. It just felt like a little bit of meditation in a way that it was surprising to me. And at the end of the month, I was thinking about this and it happened to be January 31st. And I was thinking how surprisingly lovely it was. And I looked at the list and there were 31 people And for the only time probably in my life, I had a full concept (laughs) come together in one moment. I said, okay, I've written a thank you note for every day of the year so far, and this month was dedicated to charity. So I will keep this up for this year, and every month will be a different topic. And so I'll just have to come up with the topics, the list of people for each of those months, and just execute it. So that was the origin of the idea, and then I stuck to it. There you go. And so in the book, give us an arc of like, uh, what, uh, do you, you've sat down and written. I, I know there's several months that you're using in the book to go through different chapters. And uh, give us a little outlay of that, if you would. Sure. So the book goes, the book tracks the year. So every chapter follows a different month. And every month was so different. But to give you an example, writing to my neighbors for favors they had done for me or my family throughout the year, that was a very different month than writing to my career mentors where I felt like that was, I I felt like I needed to outline those and they were longer and they were letters. And I went back and really spent time thinking about things that those people said and the example they set. So every chapter I go month by month, chapter two, neighbors, chapter three, friends. And for each of those, I pull out a benefit, a lesson and a surprise Mm. because each of those months truly did have very distinct benefits, lessons and surprises. And, and I also, for almost every chapter, I interviewed an expert of some sort to shed light on the benefit. I was feeling those things in that train ride, the, the breathing slowing and the, that feeling. And then I spoke to a neurologist and a meditation expert trying to help me figure out what was actually going on. Was my breathing really slowing, for an example? So I, that's part of the book, too, is I'm pulling in these expert interviews. And I also interviewed some people that I wrote the notes to that maybe wrote back, oh my God, this really meant a lot to me. So I interviewed a couple of those people saying, what do you mean? What was going on in your life at the time? Why did this note mean a lot to you in that moment? That's pretty awesome. That's beautiful. Is it, is part of it a sense of gratitude or being in the moment of now where you're, you're taking stock of who are the people in my life or who are the people who made a difference or maybe we should just care about people, whether they're people, I think at the store or we bump into, is there, is that kind of what that's getting down to that grounding that we need? I think that's a big part of it. For an example, in my neighbor's month, I set out the intention of, okay, I'm going to write to 30 or I guess it's February, so 28, 28 neighbors that did my, did a favor for me or my family. And I'm starting to write those and I write maybe five or six or seven or eight. And then I'm really looking around, right? To try to, and I'm thinking, I'm walking around my neighborhood and I'm trying to retrieve memories. Who else is really kind to us when we go to their store? Who else did some, did something like that? But what started happening was I'm noticing things that are happening in real time. So there was a shuttle bus that waited for my son and I as we were running down the street, or we went to Trader Joe's and I forgot one of the bags and the shopkeeper ran after me across busy Atlantic Avenue and found me. And then on that very day, actually, where I said, okay, great. Okay. I'm going to, this is note number 15 or whatever. I'm going to write to that Trader Joe's guy. I came home and my mother-in-law was here and she not only had watched my kids all day as she does every Monday, but, or did in pre-COVID times, but she had also bought my son a new winter jacket and she had brought us salmon patties for dinner. And so that was another little light bulb where I was like, okay, so I'm noticing these wonderful favors that my neighbors are doing. So there's, I'm also now noticing something that somebody in my family is doing. So it just is, it's, we all have these moments, right? Where 
you notice something that's lovely that somebody's doing for you. But I think what the year trained me to do was to expand on that feeling because it's not a fleeting thought where I just go, oh, that's nice. How nice. And then you're on to the next thing and your next thing on your list, right? Where you're, that's the way you're operating. It's like, I had this task where I was incentivized because I had to hit this number that I gave myself. I was incentivized to say, hold on, let me, that, that could be a person that I'm going to write to. Okay. So I need to know that person's name. And then I'm going to sit down and write a you know short to four minutes. It's not like I, but just sat down and explained if you hadn't run across Atlantic Avenue to give me that bag. I have two little kids. That would have been such a pain for me to come home. I don't even know how, I probably just would have for, said, forget it. And just, so I just wrote that in a note and then I'm still feeling that those nice feelings. And then I'm giving it back to the person and the manager, in fact, because I gave it to the manager. So it's, it takes this fleeting moment and it just expands it, not only for me, but for that person. I love that because you're focusing on, you're really focusing and reminiscing and being awash in in that moment and appreciating those people. You're not just saying, like you say, thank you and and have a nice day. And I imagine when it gets delivered to him, there's a whole mess of difference. And we'll talk about that in a second. But what sort of what sort of material are you using? Because this is a lost art. There's all sorts of apps where you can you can send you can either send a note to somebody. I'm really bad for sending you an email saying Merry Christmas. <laughs> and what sort of paper and, and are you doing anything special with this or unique? How does that work? So I started out buying really pretty cards, but those get very expensive on this scale. So at Target, there was a a plastic little bin of a hundred note cards, colorful note cards with envelopes. They're just like solid color note cards. And I just use those. For some people, I might upgrade, let's say for my career mentors, it was a little more, it wouldn't fit on the front and back of a, you know, four by six note card. Then maybe I would, I would upgrade a little bit, but I definitely did not I, I don't think the point is to get something very expensive and you don't have to have personalized stationery. You don't, I, I know somebody who went on a gratitude letter campaign for her 50th birthday year. She wrote 50 gratitude letters and she typed them out on her computer and printed them out and sent them. Maybe she got nicer paper than just the white paper, but maybe not. It's truly not the point. I think people get caught up in things like that where they say, I don't, it's too expensive to get this or my handwriting's not great. Or it's just like, it doesn't, that's not what you're thinking of on the receiving end. You're not thinking, oh gosh, this could have looked prettier. You're just delighted on the receiving end. You're just thinking, "Uh, this is such a surprise. Somebody thanked me out of nowhere for something that maybe happened a long time ago. How lovely that I impacted this person's life. They're not picking apart these little things that you might be thinking of. That's really interesting. So it's not really about the card. It's more about the message. And then also what's interesting is what you're saying with people are, it's so unique, like no one gets letters anymore. All I get in the right. mail is bills and, and right. sales stuff and Arby's keep on. And I'm pretty sure that they love me in a sort of way, but it's not very personalized. Let's put it that way. Um, Arby's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it says to car RT sort or something like that. But so what do you do for people like me who write like a doctor? Like I'm, I'm infamously, no matter how hard I try, I can't write well that you're going to be able to read it. Like you're going to be even more angry. You're going to be like, why did this idiot send me this paper? So what about people that have handwriting challenges? If you truly feel like you can't write something that's legible, <laughs> then you type it and print it out. But I, if it's somewhat legible and not beautiful, it, that's just a piece of you. It makes the artifact even more meaningful because that's a, you touch that and maybe there's a little smear and that your hand was the one that smeared it. So if it's somebody who loves you or somebody who you've made an impact on, or they made an impact on you, it just means all the more. But listen, typing it out and sending it is also an artifact that they can save and put away. And Mm. that is perfectly good. If you really feel like I have illegible handwriting. And then there's the uh, connection there. And then I'll put in PS, my handwriting is like a doctor. (laughs) Yeah, 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 exactly. This is a favorite you. And that would make you laugh. And that's another thing where any of those little personal touches, any, I feel like so many, almost all of my tips come down to people strive for perfection in a way that it gets in the way, whereas imperfection is, should actually be the goal. Because if you mess up and you scratch it out and you write a little note that says, oh, I messed up, like that just makes it more interesting, you know? 
I could put like a seal of blood or something on the corner. Yeah, that be- now you're talking. Now you're talking. <laughs> Actually, where that joker I rose from is, you, have you ever seen those things where the people do the old timey wax seal on the envelope? Oh, sure. And they have the Yeah, I follow that on Instagram. It's like very be- ASMR. It's like very beautiful, soothing to watch those things. I don't do that. I There's like a whole bunch of people that are like, that are finding me that are calligraphy people, wax seal people. And maybe I'll get into that at some point. For me, my handwriting's not that great either. And, you know, what to speak to the writing thing, I thought where you were going with this is that you don't think you're a great writer. You meant your handwriting. I'm a good writer, it's, just horrible. But... At the actual, the, at the actual writing. Yeah. But when people say, I imagine you, you express yourself so nicely, I would be surprised if you weren't a good writer. But for people who do have that hang up, oh, that's easy for you. You're a writer. I always say, I almost feel like being a good writer gets in the way because you're not, it's not about, yourself. If you're not about, well, it's about yourself in the sense that you want to share your own memories, but it's not about the turn of phrase and being poetic. It, it, that gets in the way. That's like preening. What you're trying to do is speak from the heart, speak the way you talk. Sometimes I would bullet a list. Like it, you don't have to write a perfect, like the letter writing class that you took in seventh grade with the three paragraph or whatever. Sometimes I remember one, one career mentor letter that I wrote probably at the end of the month where I was like feeling a little, maybe a little fatigued. And I remember saying, I'm thinking of you. I'm looking back at my career, thinking of you here are five times that you helped me. And I just like bullet pointed them and just it, that probably took me five minutes to write, but it's, it's specific. It's just, it's not written. And cause it's not about that. Yeah. I, I love this. I think it's beautiful and, and it's so unique. It's so extraordinary. It sticks out so much that when people get it, they're like, Whoa, what the heck is this? And you know, people, they get cards at Christmas or, you know, birthdays and stuff like that. And you expect that sort of thing. But I imagine getting something like this out of the blue. What's the effect on that you found? And of course, you interviewed some of these people in their book. What's the effect that you found that happened with some of these people when they got it? Yeah. So first of all, my, I wrote this note to myself early on in the year that Really, I was talking. I've learned that maybe not everybody writes themselves notes in this way. My editor in the book is you really write a note to yourself. I don't know. Anyway, I like, I don't, anyway, I wrote a note to myself as I often do. And maybe I'm the only one that was like, don't give everything, expect nothing. Do not keep track of these responses. Don't be waiting for everyone. I can't be like, Ooh, what are they going to say? Because that's going to add a strange undertone to this year. There's like a thing to it where you're expecting something and then if they don't reply, you're like, those people are stupid. And it's just it's, right. it's like, and, you know, and like it's, doing it's, a favor a for somebody for free and yeah. then expecting something in return. That's not really exactly. a gift. Yeah. So I, that was my intention that this is a gift. Nobody's asking for this. Anything that comes back to me, I will treat as a gift, but I very specifically, it's, I didn't plot these on a spreadsheet and check them off if they were nothing like that. It was, and to this day, sometimes somebody will say, I'm so sorry, I never responded. I'm like, I really don't know because I was very good about sending it out, forgetting about it. Although I did take a picture so I can look back, remember what I wrote, mm-hmm. but I was not tracking. That being said, a lot of people, of course, got back to me in a very beautiful way. I heard so many takes on this sentiment. I was going through a very hard time and this helped. Like I heard that more times than you could imagine in a way that really broke my heart. And this is not during COVID. Of course, now it would be more expected, but it just was this lesson of you. Everybody has their own busy life. And I just never would have known that these people that I love or who meant something to me at some point, even if we've lost touch, we're going through something and how wonderful that I had the power just to help a little, not fix it, but just, but just had that power to help. And so I got a lot of, I got a lot of mail responses, which I loved from really random people in my life. What's coming to mind is my best friend growing up, I wrote to her father, Mr. Goddard, in my travel month. So I had a travel month where I went back to trips that were meaningful to me and wrote to the people who made them meaningful. And he, I went on their family vacations to Lake Tahoe when I was a kid And I wrote to him and just included some specific details that he listened to John Denver in the car and we played charades and just how much it meant to me at that time in my life to feel like I was such a part of this really wonderful family. 
And he wrote a letter back to me. And at the end, because I, I addressed it to Mr. Goddard. And at the end, he wrote, you can call me Ken. I'm 40. <laughs> I can probably, we can probably get beyond Mr. at this point. So it was like, it just was this year full of those delightful little surprises that would just come in the mail or uh, I'd get voicemails. I'd get, you know, little selfies with pictures because for my friend month, so what I did for my friend's month, because that was a tricky one where it's like, how do I just thank a bunch of friends for being my friends? So what I settled on there was you can turn pictures into postcards. So yeah. I just l went through these old picture boxes and reinforced them with a mailing label and just mailed them. And so I would template them. That's another tip I have, which is when you have a batch of these to write, you can write, you can start them all the same way and then you get specific. But that's eased the way for me sometimes. That's a little easier than to say, I'm going to write 30 snowflake cards and each of them has to be it's nice to have the same sentence. And then you get helps you get in the groove. I started each of those. Remember when we were young and carefree because I'll be now I'm, I'm a mom and we're busy. And I just, when do I even have time to sit and hang out with my friends like I used to? But I found these beautiful pictures of us just hanging out at the pool or at a restaurant at dinner parties. And, and then I got a, reactions of those were a lot of selfies with them with their little picture and oh my god this made my day that's a lot uh, that's probably the phrase I heard the most throughout this year I didn't even I guess I never thought much about that phrase but it's a nice phrase you made my day and I heard it a lot I love this because I, I, I think people in my life I track people that have made a difference in my life and I often think of them sometimes I'm going I've gone through struggles and they've been there for me or there's been a moment where somebody shared something with me and and I've recognized how deep of an impact they actually made and to them mm -hmm. maybe it was just a gesture but mm -hmm. I really needed that at the time sometimes they said something like I have a friend who'll do a quote and I got a friend I, I talked about it Friday on with Timothy Shriver, Maria Shriver's brother that we had on. And I talked to him about how a friend of mine made a Facebook post. And it was just a quick Facebook post. What you do right now with COVID, find a lifter or be a lifter. And mm -hmm. he probably didn't give it too much thought. He put it out there and everyone's like, yeah, that's great. But he, I don't think he even will ever be able to realize how much that made a difference in my life in that point in time and how I've used it over the last year to be a lifter. And and I, we have these moments in life and sometimes I'll call people up or I'll send them a message on Facebook because you know, we're close friends on Facebook and I'll be like, hey, yeah, that, that really helped me out and thanks, man. And they're just kind of like, oh, yeah, thanks, man. And, and there's something just way more special with what you're doing and also just recognizing it and spending some time really giving that love, that gratitude, that focus, that power of now where you're in the moment, you're recognizing that. And by you spending all month long, and of course, the time you spent on the book, focusing on this, it really changed your outlook on life because you're looking for the beauty of life, the, the joy of right. life, a focus on like, I saw this in the news and I'm angry, which is what my day goes like. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a beautiful focus. Oh, thank you. First of all, I love what you were saying. And yeah, I have two things to say. So first of all, I love what you were saying about be a lifter. And I think that person, was that Timothy Shriver who said that? No, or, it was actually a friend no, of mine you, on oh, Facebook it was on for several years. But gotcha. we shared it on, we the we it on the show. We kind of marinated it. Yeah, I think, first of all, your friend would, I think that would mean a lot to him to hear that. And like you said, it's, listen, don't let perfection be the enemy of the good. So sharing somebody sharing that with somebody over DM or over email is way better than never sharing it. So that's number one. And if you feel like and that's a great first step. So I have no, I, I have nothing bad to say about that type of sharing and, or just a quick text. All, all of those are wonderful. But if you do find yourself thinking about that a lot, it is, a, it, there is something that is extra special about putting it down on paper and handing it to somebody or sending them in the mail because it, I'm remembering what my friend Grace, I sent her a card in our travel month. We traveled around Italy together when we were 20 and she described it. She said, you sent me that card and I had it. It made me smile when I opened it and I put it on my counter and I left it there for about a week or two. And every time I walked by, she has two dogs, three kids, and she was in remission from cancer and her mother was, so she would have a whole bunch of stuff going on. Wow. She said, every time I walked by it, I just would smile just for a week or two. And then I eventually put it away in my little, you know, memory box, whatever. But I know that it's there and it'll make me smile again at some point. So it's like we live in this world of transient messages and they don't mean nothing. They do mean something, but it's nice when something 
has that a little bit of staying power. And the other thing I was going to say is that a lot of people get caught up in, yeah, but this thing happened so long ago. What are they even going to say? Is that so weird? So this is something I spent a lot of time thinking about. And in, I, I interviewed somebody wonderful, Amit Kumar out of the University of Texas who studies He's one of the, he's actually the rare gratitude researcher who studies the impact on the recipients. Most of the gratitude researchers study how good it makes you feel. So he's, I think, the only one I know, him and his co-person, um, who studies that impact. And what he, what we spent a lot of time talking about is these kinds of meaningful, open-hearted, vulnerable thank yous, whether they're long or short, they, you, almost everybody really overestimates the awkwardness of them and really underestimates the impact. And I was, I kept saying, I would say what I said to you, like, oh, there was this one woman who it really meant a lot to her because she was going through this hard time. And he's, you're getting it wrong. It meant a lot to everybody. You didn't make everybody, you know, fill out, fill out a form at the end, like I did. So I'm coming at, you're coming at this from emotions and anecdotes, I'm coming at this from science, I promise you it means a lot to people. Everybody said it meant more than, you know, what people anticipated. That kind of goes into the thing I learned, which is there really is no statute of limitation on something like this. People have in their mind a traditional thank you note, and that first, always the number one rule, which is there's a ticking time bomb on it because somebody got you these earrings and you got to tell them that you received them and thank you, whatever. And so this is very different, right? Because you're not thanking somebody for a gift received, you're thanking them for making an impact on your life. And not only is there no statute of limitations, it means more as more time goes by. It's like what you said about be a lifter. If you wrote that note to him in 10 years time, you're saying you actually made a great impact on my, on my last decade. So that means more than just saying you said that thing last week and it was cool. So that's something else that I learned that was a, a big cool. eye opener at. Yeah. I'm going to wait 10 years and tell him then. <laughs> yeah, do it. I think it. he already knows. I think he told him. But <laughs> I, I, I wanted to make something, something special for that. I might do like, I don't know, frame something or something like that for him because it's been a life changer. It was, I was, I was at my bottom when, when COVID hit and all the events closed, all the speaking and everything that we do closed. I was just, I just, I was watching just tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars just evaporate. Shoo, gone and and so i i saw that and of course i knew i had a show and but we talked about it friday so i'll let people go back to that but one thing that's interesting about this is it's hard to get people's addresses how did you overcome that hmm. because number one you ask people for their address now they're like what's going on dude like you can't <laughs> go to the phone book anymore and i meet most everyone over the internet i have huge audiences huge interactions i have really close friends and women get a lot of weird stuff in their dm hmm. asking for a woman's address is could be a little weird even though mm. I mean, they're like, what are you sending me, Chris? How did, how, what was some of the ways that you maybe overcame that or dealt with it? So for friends, I would leave it vague and say, I have a little something to send you. Could you send me oh. your best mailing address? And for people, I had one month that I dedicated to authors. So it was like pure fan mail. It was my authors and also my son. I had him write to his favorite children's authors. And for those people, there's somebody listed on, it's an agent or a publisher. And then for somebody in between, like I remember in the author's month, there were a couple people where I emailed the author directly. They listed an email and I would ask them for a mailing address. And it was that same thing where it's like, uh, am I really going to give out my mailing address? So for those people, I would explain what I was doing. Sometimes I would just take a picture of the card and email it to them and say, I wrote you this thing. If you want to, if you would like the physical copy, send me a mailing address. And for some of these things, what I would come back to is the first benefit is to yourself because you're what I learned what it's called is when you're doing that, when you're sitting with something positive and when you're sitting with your gratitude and when you're thinking about these nice things, you're strengthening your positive recall bias, what the brain people call it. And it's basically, you're just, you're rewiring your brain to be more positive to, to be more optimistic, to concentrate on the good things instead of what might be missing. And you got, at least you got that far. So if you wrote it and you're having trouble finding an address, fine. It's okay. No. You still got a benefit from it. I love the beauty of this because it takes you in the power now. I was having trouble years ago 
were just my dogs and my dogs are Siberians. They have those beautiful blue eyes. So they're just mm-hmm. piercing. They're wonderful. And you know, my one puppy, she's really young. She's always looking at daddy's girl. And, and so it's fun to look in their eyes. I'm sure if you're a parent, uh, you're a parent, but I'm sure if other people are a parent, they're looking in their children's eyes, uh, looking in their relationships they have, really connecting. And, and sometimes we get really lost. We don't make that connection. And so for me, it's pretty important. And I, I was just writing something on Facebook today. I, I said, Life isn't about selling things, including your soul. It's about the wonderful wonder. <laughs> it's about the wonderment of being alive in the universe. Life is about being and fully experience the journey of it all. And so, I love what you're talking about, where you're really focusing on that element. You're really focusing on connecting, touching, and moving people in a way. And you're, and then you're setting it free. And right. if it moves or motivates that person, great. If not, you're not looking for anything back. And, right. but it focuses you on that moment, brings you into that power of now, and it connects you to the world. And it also, there's a lot of people that believe in the energy and the karma of that, that you're, mm-hmm. that by, you know, focusing on that or sending out that energy, it comes back to you. I don't, you can pick right. believe whatever they want. So I love that aspect. You did several months in here. Let me pull the book back up. And on the book, you've got January. Chapter one, January's charity, February neighbors, March friends, April parenting. That, that I mentioned somewhere in the bio that we first read, there was something where I think you wrote notes to your husband. Is that correct? Yeah. The last month was dedicated to my husband and I wrote him a thank you note every day. Wow. Yeah. I know. It was like a marriage sociological, anthropological <laughs> experiment. Hmm. So what was that like? Give us a little bit of insight. I'm I'm really curious about that. It was very powerful because, okay, so as parents, any parents of young kids can attest, even parents who are lucky enough to have a great relationship, an equal partnership as equal as trying to be equal in any case, there's just too much to do. And there's so many things. I just feel like there's an undercurrent for so many of us, especially with kids who have young kids, just an undercurrent of I'm doing too much, you're not doing enough. It's, it just, you feel it so deeply. I remember hearing Adam Grant on a podcast talk about it. And it's, he was saying, if you take a couple and you put them in separate rooms and you ask them how, what percentage of the work they're doing, you always add up to more than a hundred percent. Everybody thinks they're doing more than the other person. And it's not because you necessarily don't think well of your partner. It's because, and this is what Adam Grant said, well, I'm like, oh my God, it's so stupid, but it's so true. You're the person who sees what you're doing (laughs) because you're doing it and you don't see what they're doing because they're doing it. Anyway, so I felt that this was an exercise that really helped to correct that where I'm, instead of keeping track where I'm like, once again, I'm planning my son's birthday and he's not or whatever it is, which you get into those unhealthy thought patterns. It was, and my husband and I have a great, I have to, I just, I adore him. I think he's incredible. We've been together since college. He's the funniest guy. And I knew that I, of course I knew I loved him. I knew I liked him. I knew he was my best friend, but doing this sort of changed the way we talked to each other because I stopped keeping track of the stuff that I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I, started really noticing the stuff that he was doing because really I had to, you, you know, cause focus. I had to, yeah. cause I changed my focus every day. He had a little card on his nightstand and it would be about, I remember one day I was talking about the music because I don't play music at all in the house. It's just, it's like his job. I totally, that's 100% him. So I was saying you played, it's like you, I expanded it to say, not only do you play music in this house, it's so beautiful. You set the mood for the whole house and you calm down the kids when they're crazy. And you put this, it's like the kind of thing that I just was happening, but I never really thought about. And he made a special trip to get the, the, particular pink wine that I liked on the way home and he went out of his way. It just little things, but it added up to something big, which is you spend your whole day taking care of us. And I do the same. It, it was this like lovely change of perspective. 
I love that. It's really beautiful. We had some authors on that wrote the book. I forget their names, but just, they can Google on the Chris Voss show. They wrote the book 8080 Marriage. And they talk about this thing of keeping tabs and trying to be like, well, I, take, mm-hmm. I do more than you do. And it's like a list thing. like my list. And how it can turn into animosity. And I forget the other word I'm looking for. But basically, you're just like, you start to resent that. Resent. That's the, you start mm-hmm. to resent that other person. You're like, you don't do this. And it's what you focus on. I've had some bad relationships where, yeah, I'll do the dishes and vacuum the house but I have to do it when you're here because if I don't, if I do it and you're not here, you don't see it happen. And so I don't ever get any credit. And then I get yelled at because I never help out. Mm-hmm. And you're like, Jesus, you know what I do? And then there's nothing even worse when you, like you say, you do the little things. You bring home roses. You make that extra trip to the store. You do an extra favor. And sometimes you don't, I, I used to be, I'm a giver, so I have this problem, but sometimes I, I do things and I don't wave them around going, I did this and so I should mm-hmm. get some sort of thing for that. I don't know why I'm doing Bill Cosby. Mm-hmm. That's really weird. Um, <laughs> really awful choice there. That was somebody, that was a uh, fat Albert or something. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. the, but you don't wave it around if you're a good person and be like, I definitely deserve like chocolates for this. Right. And because then it's just not really a gift. And so, yeah, being focusing on that and yeah, man, that's a great thing. I think a lot of people should do that, especially in relationships, long-term relationships. Cause you're right. It gets lost. You get lost in the menagerie. I, I used to love to do a thing in all my relationships. I have a thing where when the person I'm in a relationship with comes home, I like to stop whatever I'm doing and I like to go greet them and get a kiss out of them or I kiss them or Maybe that's both ways. I'm not sure how that works. It sounded good at the time in my head as a joke. But I like to, but it breaks that moment. It recognizes mm-hmm. that you're home. And it also puts me in a different state where I go, okay, she's here now. And uh, it's time to take care of the people I'm, I'm interested in. And when they leave too, because I've learned sometimes the hard way that someone can walk out that door and you don't ever see them again. And you never know when that moment's going to happen in the chaos of this universe. And so it's really important. And and just like what you're doing with the gratitude, you never know, especially with COVID. Holy crap. We never see this person again. They could get sick. They go in the hospital. You can't reach them. They're on an intubator and uh, game over. And so I think it's taught us more in this sort of era. And then what you've done with the book that well, these moments, these people in our lives are more important than ever. I certainly sat down with COVID and went, what's the most important thing right here? mom, two sisters. These are the things that I can't live without. And these are the most important things. Screw the car, whatever, buying this new house, boat, whatever sort of crap. That doesn't matter because those things will still be here tomorrow. They're not going to get COVID and die. These, these people might and and could and did. So, well, they, they did get COVID. So I think this is beautiful what you're doing and just focusing on stuff like that. Is there any teasers that you want to give out that people should, uh, we always like to give a teaser so people can want to pick up the book even more than they usually would. What comes to mind is in my friend's chapter. So I said that I sent out all these, all these postcards from pictures and they started out, remember when we were young and carefree. So most of those were very, Lovely, easy, no problem. But the last four, I kept shuffling to the bottom of the deck because I, our relationships just weren't the same and they were mm-hmm. strained. Mm-hmm. And in fact, one, three were, they were, our relationships were not as close as they once were for different circumstances. But the last one, we really were not friends anymore. In my mind, she had stepped away when I became a mom. And just wasn't interested because we weren't in the same life phase anymore. That was my narrative in my to myself. But I did. I ended up, it was really scary. I remember feeling like tr- literal cliched butterflies in my stomach when I mailed it. Because I was like, I'm, this is a person I love who dumped me in my mind. And I'm sending her this kind of missive. I don't know if this is the right way to do it. I don't know if she's going to be offended. And so I guess that'll be my teaser is what happened next. I I would now you've got drama for me. I gotta go find out what that's about. So <laughs> order of the books, folks. I love that aspect. And there's so many beautiful things. There's so many beautiful things about uh, you in here. How does how do you deal with the reciprocation? Because sometimes I'm a giver, but I'm not a good I'm not a good taker. And so mm. I do giving and then scampering away, going. Ha, ha, ha. But I'm not good at like it's perfect people, for you. It's perfect for introverts. It's yeah. <laughs> It's but, perfect for people who are like that because I could just give you everything. Yeah. And... But what do you do when people come back to you with a thing? You, it's I, I don't know. That's where I have a hard time. Like when people come to me and they go, you really made a difference in my life. I'm like, mm. 
I'm an idiot. Four dollars will buy you a cup of coffee. Like I'm no messiah. <laughs> I would say that what I would hope is that if people started sending you notes like this, I would hope that they, even if they made you uncomfortable, and the word I use a lot in my book is squirmy. Like even if it made you squirmy to hear, Ugh, stop saying nice things about me. I'm not great at taking compliments. Like even if you feel that in the moment, which I share that, and it's something I'm trying to get over. Sometimes I do share that. I'd rather be giving a compliment than receiving one. I would hope that you would still hear it, right? And mm -hmm. that it would mean something to you, even if it made you uncomfortable in that moment, it would, you'd think about it later and you'd remember it and you would know that you, that something that you said, similarly to your Facebook friend said something, you think about it all the time. It gave you a new perspective. I'm sure you've said so many things on this show that have done that for people. Yeah. And I imagine that if they told you that, it might feel squirmy and weird and uncomfortable, but that you would hear it and that it would feel that it would get in there into your heart and then it would make a difference for you. It usually does. I'll pull out a joke though or something like that and be like, yeah, or I'll just call them up and I'll be like, did you, you, you sent a letter to me. You clearly wrote the wrong person. So uh, did uh -huh. you want to you know that? And, and if anyone wants to write letters in the show and tell everybody how much they love me, Make sure you uh, <laughs> include cash. Uh, <laughs> so there's that. But I, I love the concept of this love, this book. I love the beauty of it. I love that you spent all this time doing it. You did it in so many different aspects. People that influence your career, books, uh, people who travel with food, the uh, parenting, friends, neighbors. Probably a good thing for keeping the neighbors, the relationship with the neighbors going. Yeah. And some, it's upgraded my relationships with certain neighbors, which was so nice. It's like we had a lovely little, hey, how's it going kind of thing. And just writing a note elevated it, right? Huh. So maybe we know each other's names now. I'm thinking of a guy at the farmer's market where now we all use each other's names when we see each other instead of just a friendly wave or a neighbor down down the hall or I'm like looking out the window down down my little alleyway down there in Brooklyn it went from like friendly to you no know, now we actually will will share a drink outside and became more like friends and I imagine one of the the great things of this is the pay it forward aspect like uh, my Starbucks in Vegas that I used to go to every morning you I don't know what was, I don't know who started it in the morning, but someone would always start to pay it forward. And so every time you go there, it'd be like the guy behind you paid for, uh, or in front of you paid for your stuff. Do you want to pay for behind or let it roll? And you, you just do that. And it was really nice. And so I imagine something like this when you're sending this beautiful thing out, it hopefully puts them in that moment where they put you in the same moment that you were in, where mm -hmm. you're recognizing the gratitude and the, the power of now. And hopefully that spreads. I heard a lot of that. Yeah. I'm thinking of uh, my friend Allison in Seattle. I I wrote to her in my travel month saying we went to, I went to Seattle five years ago thank you for letting us stay over we had so much fun with you and it was so great meeting your kids and I know it was five years ago but it really you took the time to show us around it really made a difference in that trip and she said that she then did the same thing for somebody else mm -hmm. that she thought back to a weekend trip that she took mm -hmm. to a high school friend's house and wrote her a similar letter so that that is a nice part this is going to be awesome. I'm thinking to write a book like yours, only I'm going to spend a year writing people I hate letters. No, mm. I'm not going to do that. I'm just kidding. That's just a joke, people. Anything that more was, before that we... was my husband. That was my husband's idea for the next book. <laughs> a, year of a year of grievances. <laughs> a year of grievances. Just, <laughs> I got just get it all off your time. test. Just yeah. like, I never forgot it. You said that thing, and I never forgot it. <laughs> and it's time for me to tell you about it. And that was That's when you get like some coal or something. You know, mm -hmm, some coal mm -hmm. and you yeah. mail it and you, you just wrap it or you just throw it. You basically take the coal and you take the letter you wrote and then you just throw it through their window or something. There you go. I'm there just kidding. Go. Don't do that, people. <laughs> we The lawyers said that I can't do that. They're in the mic right now screaming at me. So this has been wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> this has been wonderful, Gina. Anything more you want to plug on the book before? Anything more I want to plug on the book? No, I'm delighted to be here. No, I, I, I think we said it all. I, I really thank you so much for your, these were lovely questions and very thoughtful. So thank you. I love the concept of it. I think it's really thoughtful. In fact, I, I know that you didn't do the wax thing, but I'm actually going to, as soon as I get off this, I'm actually going to Google the wax thing and see if I can pick it up. And I'm going to try and figure out how to do this because I there are a lot of people I need to thank for my life. And maybe one of them should be me. 
I don't know. No, I don't need to do that. I already have enough of an ego. But thank you for being I don't think that's a bad idea. I don't think that's a bad idea, really. I feel like a part of the, when I talked about the months that I spent writing fan mail to authors and most of them will never read it, I felt like that was a part of it, was getting back to the person. My, I feel like a reader is such an essential part of who I am. And those, some of those things get lost as life gets in the way. And I felt like that was a month of reconnecting with I don't know, the person that I was when I was a kid and remembering, I don't know, remembering what I love about myself and and the relationship I have with art and how important that is to me. So I feel like a lot of this was a little bit about that falling. It's not, a, I wasn't only falling in, in love with my life, my husband, my neighbors, my neighborhood. I felt like I was, it was a, it was a positive thing for myself too. I felt I've done a pretty good job choosing people and keeping them in my life. And I have to be proud of that. Yeah. And the love and the influence and positivity that spreads and spreads to other people. And it's just, it's like a, what's that old story about somebody you do something, you're short or curt or mean or insulting to somebody you just see on the road or honk at them in the traffic and then they're angry and then they go honk. It just, so it's that, that beautiful pass on is so wonderful. Thank you so much, Gina, for spending some time with us today on the show and uh, enlightening us on your beautiful book. Give us your plugs so people can see you on the interwebs. Yes, GinaHamity.com. All the social medias are Gina.Hamity. Uh, I think Twitter might be Gina underscore Hamity. If you search Gina Hamity, you'll find me. There you go. And thank you for being on the show. We certainly appreciate it. It was my pleasure. There you go. And to my audience, check it out. I think this is beautiful. We should all start doing this. Everyone should just start doing this and just writing beautiful letters to each other. You don't have to write anything beautiful. Just tell someone to thank you. Just reach out to them. And you don't have to be like Robert Frost or anything. Just let people know that you care and, and uh, you appreciate the small efforts that do. It's the small things in life. She is the author of the book, I Want to Thank You, How a Year of Gratitude Can Bring Joy and Meaning in a Disconnected World. Thanks, my audience, for tuning in. Go to YouTube.com to see the video version of this. Go to Goodreads.com for says Chris Voss, see what we're reading. Go to all the different groups on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and Instagram, and see the stuff there as well. Be safe. Be nice to each other. Maybe write some letters to each other. Wear your mask, and we'll see you guys next time.